This presentation is on using the normal distribution table by Dr. Mary Hansen. The objectives are that the student will be able to use the standard normal table to calculate percentiles and percentile ranks of data that follow a normal distribution. Specifically, students will be able to find probabilities above, below, and in between two z-scores, find percentiles associated with the z-distribution, find probabilities above, below, and in between two raw scores, and find percentiles of raw score distributions. Please have access to your normal distribution table from your textbook as well as the associated worksheets from class as you view this presentation. Recall that the standard normal distribution, also called the unit normal or Z distribution, is the normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1 and therefore a variance of 1. Also recall that for normal distributions, approximately 68% of the data fall within one standard deviation of the mean in each direction. Thus, for the Z or standard normal distribution, 68% of the data will fall within Z scores of negative 1 and 1. Approximately 95% of the data between Z scores of negative 2 and 2 and approximately 99.7% of the data fall within z-scores of negative 3 and 3. Those probabilities are actually estimated probabilities. The actual probability of data that falls between a z-score of negative 1 and 1 is 68.26% of the data. Up to this point in the class, we have estimated this proportion as 68% of the data. The normal distribution table found in the back of the book contains the exact probabilities associated with z-scores. Consider a z-score of positive 2. How much of the data falls above a z-score of positive 2? Up to this point in our class, we've estimated the proportion of data between z of negative 2 and 2 to be 95% of the data. Therefore, 5% is left over with 2.5% being in the tail. You can see that the actual percent above a z-score of 2 is 2.28 percent of the data. Our estimation is close. Consider this example. A population of adult heights is normally distributed with a mean of 68 and a standard deviation of 6. What is the probability of having a height greater than 80? The first thing we do is sketch this distribution, marking the mean of 68 on the curve. Our score of 80 falls exactly two standard deviations above the mean. That score corresponds to a z-score of positive 2. From the previous slide, we saw that a z-score of positive 2 has 2.28% of the data above it. Therefore, the probability that z is greater than 2 is the same as the probability that x is greater than 80, that is 2.28% of the data. This slide shows an, an excerpt from the standard normal distribution table found in the back of your book. Note that this table has four columns. The leftmost column is the Z column, where you will look up Z-scores. Column B contains the proportion in the body, or the larger proportion. As you can see from the top figure, when you are shading the larger proportion, you will be looking for the proportion in the body. Column C represents the smaller proportion, or the proportion in the tail and column D represents the proportion of data that falls between the mean of 0 and that particular z-score. Depending on the problem that is asked, we will be looking at various columns of the z-table. Note as you peruse the z-table that all of the z-scores are positive values. That is because the distribution is symmetric. We will have to use the fact that the distribution is symmetric to answer questions involving negative z-scores, which represent scores that fall below the mean.
What is the probability of having a z-score greater than 1? To answer this question, first sketch a normal distribution curve and mark the score of, z of 1 on the curve. We are asked for the probability that the z-score is greater than 1, so we shade the probability to the right of 1. That probability that is shaded is the smaller or the proportion in the tail. Follow the normal distribution table so that you find a z-score of 1. The proportion in the tail that you should see is 0.1587, representing 15.87% of the data. Again, up to this point in class, we have estimated that percent as 16% of the data. What is the probability of having a z-score that is less than 1.5? Again, sketching the curve and marking 0 and 1.5 on the curve, we are looking for the probability that is less than or below 1.5. Shading this probability, we can see that that is the proportion that is larger or the proportion in the body. Following the z-table down to find a z-score of positive 1.5, we see that 93.32% of the data fall below a z-score of positive 1.5. What proportion of data is below a z-score of 2? Be sure to note the body and the tail. The first thing we do is sketch the distribution and mark the z-score of 2 on the distribution. We are looking for the proportion of data that is below a z-score of 2 or the probability that z is less than 2. Following the z-table down to a score of 2, and noting that we are looking for the larger proportion or the proportion in the body, we see that the probability that z is less than 2 is 0.9772. That means that 97.72% of the data fall below z scores of 2. What is the probability that the z score is less than negative 1.5? In this case, we have to mark a z of negative 1.5 on our curve and shade the probability to the left of that score. We cannot look up negative 1.5 in our table. However, we can use the fact that the normal distribution is symmetric to answer this question. The probability of having a z-score less than negative 1.5 is the same probability of that z-score being greater than positive 1.5. Find the z-score of 1.5 in the table and find the smaller proportion, the proportion in the tail. That probability is 0 0.0668. So the probability that z is less than negative 1.5 is 0 0.0668. Understanding the notation and writing the notation correctly is important in this class. What is the probability that z is greater than 0.8? Again, we have a positive z-score, a little bit less than 1. We're asked, what is the probability of having a z-score greater than that value? So we shade in the probability at 0.8 and above. Looking up a z-score of 0.8, we see that the probability, in this case the smaller probability or the proportion in the tail, is 0.2119 or 21.19% of the data fall above a z-score of 0.8. One thing to note is that along the horizontal axis you will mark the z-scores and eventually the x-scores. Probabilities are marked above the curve. While z-scores can be negative, probabilities can never be negative. Probabilities are values that fall between 0 and 1 in decimal form or between 0 and 100% in percentage form. A negative probability does not exist. What is the prob probability of finding a z-score greater than negative 1? Again, 
we mark the z-score on the bottom of the curve, and in this case we want the probability to the right of negative 1. This is a larger probability, in this case, the proportion in the body. We look up a z-score of positive 1 because the probability of being greater than negative 1 is the same as being less than positive 1, the proportion in the body. That proportion is 0.8413, or 84.13% of the data fall above a z-score of negative 1. Again, note that the z-score can be negative, indicating a value below the mean. The probability is always positive. Probabilities cannot be negative numbers. What proportion of data falls between z-scores of negative 0.5 and positive 0.5? The notation for writing this problem is capital P for the probability, the probability that negative 0.5 is less than z is less than 0.5. In this case, we have to mark two z-scores on our table, negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. Note that the z is greater than negative 0.5 and at the same time less than positive 0.5. We shade the probability between those two scores. We cannot find the answer to this problem by merely looking up one number in the normal distribution table. However, we can use the mean to z column for looking up a value of 0.5 and then doubling that probability. The probability between 0 and 0.5, looking up a z of 0.5 in the normal distribution table and following it over to the mean to z column, we see a probability of 0.1915. That is the same probability that is between a z-score of z negative 0.5 and 0. Therefore, the probability between z-scores of negative 0.5 and positive 0.5 is 0.1915 plus 0.1915 or 0 0.3830, representing 38.3% of the data. What proportion of the data is in between z-scores of 1 and 2? Note in this case, that we are on the right side of our curve for both of these probabilities, so we cannot use the mean to z column. We do want to mark a z-score of 1 and a z-score of 2 on our curve and shade the probability in between that we are asked for. Again, we cannot look up one single number in the normal table and get the answer to this problem. What we have to consider is that the probability between 0 and 1, looking up 1 in the table and using the mean to z column, is 0.3413. Doing the same thing for a z-score of 2, between a z-score of 0 and a z-score of 2, lies about 47.72% of the data. Therefore, the probability in the shaded area is 0.4772, the probability from 0 over to 2, minus 0.3413, which is the probability from 0 to 1. Therefore, the probability that 1 is less than z is less than 2. Also stated, the probability that z is between 1 and 2 is 0.1359 representing 13.59% of the data. Another way to use the z-table is when you're given a probability and asked to find the z-score. In letter A, you are given the probability that the z is the cutoff for the top 10% of the data. You are asked to find the z-table. This example requires that you use the z-table in reverse. If we consider the 0.1% of data, that is the proportion in the tail. So we have to look down column C, the proportion in the tail, for a probability that is close to 0.1. Following the table down, 
I see that there are two proportions that are close. The probability for a z-score of 1.28 is 0 0.1003, and the probability of a z-score of 1.29 is 0 0.0985. For our purposes, we will take the closest value of 0 0.1003. A z-score of 1.28 has 0 0.1003 of the data in the tail to the right of it. Therefore, the z-score in question is 1.28. What z-scores have about 60% of the data between them? Well, to answer this question, we should use the mean to z column and look up a score of 0.3. If we look up a probability of 0.3 in the mean to z column, we should find that we are in the z equals 0.84 row of the table. Other logic could be that you look in the proportion in the tail for a probability as close to 0.2 as you can find it. Therefore, the z-scores of negative 0.84 and positive 0.84 are the z-scores that we're looking for. Note that when you are given a probability and asked to find the z-score, you will have to look up that probability in either columns B, C, or D, and then shift over to column A for the z-score for your final answer. Find the z-score that has 10% of the data above it. This example should look familiar. First, what you'll do is sketch the distribution that has 10% of the data above it. Note that you are given a probability and must mark that probability above the curve. You are not told that z equals 0.1. It is imperative to distinguish between z a standard score telling the number of standard deviations away from the mean a score falls and the probability, telling the likelihood of those scores. Again, we now know that the probability in the tail is 0.1. We go to the z-table, finding the proportion in the tail value that is closest to 0.1. Then we'll look over for the corresponding z-score. That z-score, as we just saw, is 1.28. Find the z-score that separates the bottom 15% of the scores. In this case, we are again are given a proportion, a percent of data, not a z-score. We are asked to find the z-score. Therefore, we will mark the lowest 15% of data above the curve. What we need is to know what is the z-score that has 15% of the data below it. You can see from your shading that that is the smaller proportion. So you can look down the proportion in the tail column for 0.15 and you can see that the closest value is z equals negative 1.04. Note that it is imperative that you find the negative number because you are below the mean. Again, z-scores can be negative, probabilities can never be negative. The next few examples illustrate how you can find probabilities associated with raw scores. That involves putting together the information from chapter, the last two chapters of your textbook. It is imperative that you draw a picture to help you visualize this event. This will also help you later on in statistics class. You will mark the x values on the curve, including the mean and the value in question. Then, to find probabilities associated with those scores, you'll first have to transform the x to a z-score and mark the z-score on the curve so that you can look up the probability associated with that z-score in the standard normal table. Consider this example. The distribution of SAT scores is normally distributed with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. 
what is the probability of getting a score greater than 750 in this distribution? We write this as the probability that x is greater than 750. Note that the notation is very important. Capital P represents probability, x represents the raw data score, and z represents the standard score. We write this as the probability that x is greater than 750 using the greater than sign. Then we want to draw a picture. We have to make sure to mark the x and z scores and shade the probability that we are asked for. This will help us to get the correct answer. After we sketch a picture, we will take that x score and convert it to a z score. How many standard deviations away from the mean is this score of 750? Once we know that, we can use the standard normal table with the z-score that we find. So if we mark our mean of 500 and our score of 750 on our normal distribution curve, we are asked for the probability of getting greater than 750. This is a tail probability, so we will be looking in the proportion in the tail column. Before we do that, however, we have to find a z-score because we cannot look up an x value of 750 in this table. Fortunately, though, we can transform all normal distributions into the standard normal distribution using the z-score formula. Z-score formula, again, is Z minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Therefore, the probability that X is greater than 750 equals the probability that Z is greater than 750 minus the mean of 500 divided by 100, or the probability that Z is greater than 2.5. Again, a score of 750 in a distribution where the standard deviation is 100 is 2.5 standard deviations above the mean. Once we have the z-score for this problem, we can look up the z in the table, and again we have the smaller proportion, so we need to find the answer in the proportion in the tail column, and that proportion is 0.0062. What is the proportion of scores that is less than 400? Again, we write this as the probability that x is less than 400 using the less than sign. Again, we'll draw a picture, mark the x and z scores, and shade the probability that we're asked for. Again, we cannot work in the raw scale score with our normal distribution table, so we have to standardize or convert that data to the standard normal scale or z-score scale in order to find the probability that we are asked for. Marking our mean of 500 and our score of 400 on the curve, we can see without doing a mathematical formula that we are at the score that is one standard deviation below the mean. We are asked what's the probability of getting a score less than that number. Well, the probability that x is less than 400 is the same as the probability that z is less than 400 minus 500 divided by 100, or the probability that z is less than negative 1. Again, negative z scores are not found in our table, so we have to look up the positive 1 value, and we want to look up the tail probability. The probability in the tail of z equals negative 1, or the proportion in the tail is 0.1587. Consider the following question. What SAT score separates the top 5% from the remainder of the scores? A problem like this could be if only the top 5% of students are allowed to participate in a program or only the top 5% of patients are allowed to participate in a program. This allows you to figure out what score will separate the top 5% of students or patients. In this problem, we are told that the probability in the tail is 5%. That is, we are given a probability value 
we are given a proportion of data and we will mark that value above the curve. Then we'll have to find the z-score associated with that 5% of data. Once we find the z-score, we'll convert that back to the raw scale score using the formula x equals m plus s times z or x equals mu plus sigma z if we are working with population data. First, we are working in the top 5%. So we want to shade the top 5% of the data and mark that probability. What we need next is the z-score that has 5% of the data above it. Therefore, we want to look in the proportion in the tail for a probability of 0 0.05. Again, you may have noticed it is very important to look at the correct proportion, not 0.5, not 0 0.005, but in this case, 0 0.05. If you look for the probability in the tail of 0 0.05, you can see that the z-scores closest to that are 1.64 and 1.65. In this particular case, the z-score does happen to be right in the middle, corresponding to a z-score of 1.645. Once we have the z-score, we know that we're looking for the score that falls 1.645 standard deviations above the mean. In order to find that score, we start with our mean and then we take 1.645 times our standard deviation. That is our formula x equals m plus s times z, 500 the mean plus our standard deviation of 100 times 1.645, which is 664.5. Thus, that SAT score separates the top 5% from the remainder of scores for this distribution. The bottom 20% of SAT examinees will be eligible for a free SAT prep course. What SAT score must students score below in order to be eligible for the course? Again, this is the problem we are given the probability so the first step is going to be to sketch the picture and find the z-score that marks the lowest 20% of the data. We shade in that probability and mark it as 20% or 0.2. Again, that is the smaller proportion, so we want to look down the smaller proportion or the proportion in the tail column for a value of 0.2. Remember that we are in the lower end of the distribution, so we have to have a negative z-score. That z-score should be negative 0.84. Then, finding the actual data point, we start at the mean and go 0.84 standard deviations, in this case below the mean. So we have 500 plus 100 times negative 0.84, or 416. The score of 416 will mark the lowest 20% of test takers for this data. Again, the objectives of this presentation were to help you to use the standard normal table to calculate percentiles and percentile ranks of data that follow a normal distribution. Several types of problems were covered. First, you should be able to find probabilities above, below, and in between two z-scores. To do so, you will use the standard normal table and look at the z-values for whatever z-score you're given, followed by using finding the answer in either column B, C, or D. Second, you were asked to find percentiles of the z-distribution. This would be a case where you were asked to find the z-score that marked the top 10% of the data. In percentile language, that z-score would be the 90th percentile because it would have 90% of the data at or below it. In order to solve a problem like that, you will look up that 0.1 in the proportion in the tail column and then move over to find the corresponding z-score. It is important that you understand the two ways that you can use the z-distribution, one when you're given a z-score 
and one when you're given a probability. Then both of those problems are extended to allow you to find the probabilities above, below, and in between two raw scores and find percentiles of raw score distributions. When dealing with raw score distributions, you first have to convert to the z-score scale and then use the normal distribution table. Again, the last two points here combine the content from previous class to the content of this presentation. You start on the raw score scale, convert to the z-score scale, and then find the probability. If you are given a probability, you first find the z-score that corresponds to that, but that is not the final answer. You then have to put your final answer in terms of the data in question or the raw score data. This presentation on using the normal distribution table was developed by Dr. Mary Hansen.